we really hope you like this video just subscribe like and click the bell to be notified of more content just like this Hello everybody once again, welcome to uh, Zoomers with John Richardson in sunny somewhere in the north of England and, and Charlie McCann in Gibraltar looking, looking like a cucumber on legs, may I say. But, you know, every week you're looking healthy and down there's me and Rico just getting paler and more miserable every week. How are you Charlie? I'm in good form, yeah. It's um, windy, uh, overcast here and has been sort of for the last week i'm afraid we get uh, winters as well but in good form looking forward to uh, a really good weekend of well of course the great thing this week is of course we have uh, a double header of premier league uh, action as well and that liverpool spurs game already looks very tasty on uh, next wednesday um rico it's great to see you as always i really hope you well i i, I don't like starting off with, with 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 downers and what have you but i think i think we might as well tip our hat to paolo rossi uh, who sadly mm. died this week at the, at, you'd say, the tender age of, of 64. You're a massive World Cup man, Rico. What are, what are your thoughts and your memories of Paolo Rossi? Well, incredibly, I was reading World Soccer the other day and uh, there was a big piece on Paolo Rossi. This is before, obviously, uh, he sadly passed away. And he was the first winner of their uh, World Player of the Year award. Um, mm. You know, so that, that was how big he was. Um, fantastic striker. Scored goals for fun, lit up the '82 World Cup. Um, tremendous player, and it it just shows you that I'm afraid that we're losing more and more of these icons. You know that this, this is what happens. But he, he was relatively young, wasn't he? Only in his early sixties. But fantastic player. Um, wore that lovely blue Italian shirt with with poise and grandeur. Yeah, a fabulous player, and you know we we, we doff our cap to him. Um, to me, Paolo Rossi, 82 World Cup, very, very vivid. I thought it was, Charlie, I don't know about you, one of the great World Cups. But also that Italian team, uh, it, it sounds, it, it's maybe not the right time to say, maybe it is. But they, they beat arguably the best team never to win a World Cup. For, because to me, that Brazil 82 team were just unbelievable. Zico, Socrates, Falcao, Junior, just amazing. That, that is one of, the, that when you talk about the 1970 World Cup team, this Brazil team, you, I remember being absolutely gutted when that Brazil team lost because they, did, they were the best. Arguably that we all knew they were going to be the best team, not only of that World Cup, but arguably the best team ever. And they lost because of one man, and one Gerd Muller type predatory goal scorer, and that was Paolo Rossi. But I was, I was wondering where you were going with that. And I was going to say, don't kid yourself. That was the best Brazil team. And, and obviously you've, you've confirmed your thoughts on that. But uh, yeah, to, but as you say, that, that, you know, that 1982, but really you go back to that 3-2 uh, that game and goodness me, how did, how did Brazil get beat? But um, it was a fantastic Italian team as well. And of course, it, it was almost the Italian team that had come out the shadows because, of course, we all thought at the time in the sort of the, the 70s, especially, and then early 80s, even going into 82, that they were sort of this catenaccio and very defensive side as well. And of course, they hit um, it, it, Brazil on the break and Brazil had the ball in that game. But they showed after that and later on in the tournament what a great side they were themselves. But oh, that Brazil side... And that, those two wonderful, like, iconic kits, to, you know, to, going back to what John said, the blue of Italy and the yellow and the shorts, you know, let's say short shorts as well, and just an extraordinary. But that Brazil side, Rob, as you say, one of the great sides, if not the greatest side, never to have won a World Cup. Um, Rico, it's, it's not quite a seamless one because Carlo Ancelotti didn't play in that World Cup. He played in... World Cups after it. He's going to be managing Everton, a game you're at this weekend, Everton and Chelsea. Um, you're telling me you're the Everton correspondent more than Charlie at the moment? Mm. Well, I think so. I've done the last two games. I'm doing this one. Doing the game against Arsenal and I'm doing the game on Boxing Day at uh, Sheffield United. Eight o'clock. I think that's the short straw, to be fair. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've, I've enjoyed watching Everton. I, I, I know Charlie's going to say a few things there. Uh, they're underperforming at the moment, definitely, and uh, I can see a few problems. But I'll let Charlie go first on Everton. Let, get, let, let him get, get there first. 
I, I don't think Everton are underperforming at all. I think that's as good as Everton are. <laughs> I, I think R R Richarlison, um, Calvert-Lewin, I think, you know, everyone kept telling me and I kept, uh, you know, uh, almost playing a straight back and people were telling me that Decore Allen, James Rodriguez were these magnificent signings. And, you know, I, I think it's fair to say I said, can we wait until, you know, uh, uh, of course they've had their honeymoon period. The honeymoon period is, is finished I think also the honeymoon period for uh, for Carlo Ancelotti as well. Why Fabian Delph? All every Evertonian I know, and this is proper genuine supporters. Can you tell me why Niels Nkunku, Anthony Gordon, why they're not in that uh, that that squad? Nkunku, Fabian Delph came and played, and oh, that's right, he got injured again. I could have told you that he got injured. It's it's scandalous. I don't know. I don't know what Nkunku. He, I, I know that there's there's. there's the rumours are that he's not maybe the greatest defender, but we played three centre backs and then you know and Fabian Delph left side of midfield, left side in a three-five-two formation at Turf Moor against the next to the bottom of the league. I'm sorry, when we went to Newcastle, we we had a poor team and we had a defensive team as well. And I'm sorry, no, you know I, I don't get you know you, you you John are not a great admirer of King Pep as a, a Pope Pep as you call him. Well, I think, you know, uh, Ancelotti may do everything with a charm and a thing, but if I'm Niels and Kunku and Anthony Gordon, I want to know why some of these, in, in, in my opinion, th these players who are not the future of Everton Football Club are getting a shirt ahead of him. Rico? Yeah, well, to be fair, I agree with, with some of that, having seen them at close, close quarters for the last few games. I mean, James Rodriguez is a top player, absolutely top draw, but you can get at him. You just niggle him. And he, he doesn't like the physical stuff. And, you know, Burnley, well, I wouldn't say did him, but, you know, they, 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 were, they close marked him, put it that way. And uh, apart from uh, a fantastic shot, which brought a, a brilliant save from Nick Pope, uh, he did very little. Richarlison is a, a, is a top player, as, as we all know. Again, he, he can be sort of, uh, well, not knocked out the game, but he, he can go quiet because he doesn't like the physical stuff either. So I'm afraid both of those have got to get a grip because it is a physical game. Richarlison I, I, you know, played far better than James Rodriguez against Burnley. And then, uh, as you say, as Charlie said, Fabian Delft in as a left wing back only lasted, up was it, 20 odd minutes before he was injured. And that's the story of his season. Um, Calvert Lewin still doing it. He's 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 still one of the best players. And I've got to give um, a sort of a shout out to uh, Jordan Pickford, who I've been critical of this season. He he was magnificent against Burnley, as as was Nick Pope. So yeah, I agree. I think uh, the honeymoon period is over for Carlo Ancelotti. He's now got to got to deliver, and um, with the money that Mashuri has uh, put into that side. Um, they need to be in the top six. They're coming up against the Chelsea side, who've won eight out of ten, no defeat in 14. They've scored 25 goals, and those 25 goals have been spread amongst 13 players. Um, we, we worried how Frank was going to sort it out, Charlie. He seems to be sorting out pretty well. Doesn't he? Doesn't he? He has got a real... and, and, and a... An array. It's not as if they've not had injuries as well. It's not as if they've had everything sort of go their way as well. I would still go back to that game when they were, you know, they were taught a lesson by Liverpool. Okay, it was a, a, a Liverpool side with with Van Dijk and also with um, um, Thiago Alcantara in the side for the second forty five minutes. But I think they've improved since then. I think they're going to continue to improve. And uh, oh yeah, they're in a, they're, they're in a race for the championship, a title rather. Um, and you know, there's four clubs in that uh, in that title race. When you see what Liverpool have done to Wolves and to Leicester in recent weeks, but you still only get three points for that. Um, but Liverpool were irresistible again uh, at the weekend. But you know, they I think I would imagine they will be comfortable winners. But so looking forward to that Spurs game. And whatever we say, and I've got to hold my hand up. And, you know, I thought, you know, uh, I thought Mourinho was building a, you know, a totally defensive sort of side, and he didn't know his best side. Well, he does now. I think he does know his his best side. Uh, 
and uh, it, it's it's going to be that is going to be in my opinion the game of the season uh, so far. Um, but Chelsea, I would think again. You know, I said last week the get the better the weekend was Everton and Burnley to finish one one. Chelsea to win and both teams to score at Goodison tomorrow night. Three one for Chelsea. Um, Larry, we might as well move on to, to Spurs to talk about them. Um, Rick, would it, would it matter a jot to Spurs fans? They only have 39% of possession against Arsenal. They, they play a, a very Jose Mourinho way, um, but you can't argue with it, can you? I think Spurs fans would argue against that, but Jose Mourinho wouldn't, of course. But that's, that's the way he is. That's the way he sets up teams, sets up teams to win. He's pragmatic. But Spurs fans want a bit of flair. Um, so what you've got to do is combine the two. Certainly, I think Spurs fans forgave that lack of possession against Arsenal to beat the old enemy, you know, um, conclusively. Um, yeah, I mean, Josie, I, I thought that he was a busted flush, to be honest. I hold my hands up and I thought, you know, things weren't going to work out at Tottenham. Well, they have. He, he's got that side going. Um, all right, there's a few problems. Obviously, he doesn't fancy Deli Alley. Deli Alley is likely to go out on loan in January. That's a strange one because uh, Ali obviously has, um, uh, I don't know, a, a sort of a problem, a personal problem with Jose. Some, something's gone on behind the scenes, but uh, he's still a decent player, but he's not part of the squad. The so so um, played well last night. He, he's, he's looking a, a fine midfield player. That, that's another bit of. Uh, Armory for uh, Jose. Gareth Bale isn't a regular. He's uh, in the Europa League side, but not playing the Premier League. So you think there's obviously more to come from Gareth Bale. So it's, it's exciting for Tottenham. But yeah, in answer to your original question, I, I think Tottenham fans would like to see a bit more flair. And they are capable of that because, you know, they've got that fantastic attacking uh, trio or quartet, if you want. So I think there's more to come from Tottenham. Um, Leicester ran off with the title before anybody really realised how they played, you know, the way they sort of, you know, Jamie Vardy on the break, etc. I just wonder with Spurs, you know, Charlie, with Harry Kane dropping so deep that teams will click onto it. They're beginning to, to you know, to pick him up because he's causing so much, he's causing more problems in his own half than he is the other end. I just also wonder whether it doesn't matter because Spurs have got so much attacking options with Son and and, you know, even Lucas Moura last night was terrific. Um, whether, whether it matters how Josie plays. If you don't concede goals as well, I think that's so, in, so important. I love the way, you know, Mourinho, if, if they get ahead, it'll be a difference if they've got to go on the, on the Chevy chase, isn't it? You know, I think the, the Arsenal game, they managed that game so effectively, um, scoring the early goal and, and they're huffed and puffed. I would think almost uh, as, as well, Hugo Lloris is almost symbolic of this renaissance in Spurs as well. I mean, for, for over a season now, you know, I, I thought he was, you know, fur coat and no knickers um, since he won the World Cup. He, he just hadn't, you know, there was no substance to him and he just wasn't the goalkeeper. He was, oh, he is now. He's, he's, and that is a very, very effective, and again, I've got to hold my hands up to, to Eric Dyer. You know, Eric Dyer playing in midfield, you know, again. And now he's, he's, he's gone back into that, uh, the back, uh, into the back four. Um, I like the way as well they play Aurier, you know, and Matt Doherty came with, you know, this sort of, oh, he'll be the abs. No, he won't. He was never going to be in, in a flat back four. Of course, he can play the, the right side of the, of, of the wing back. Um, but in the flat back four, I think Serge Aurier, I, you know, I, I honestly think, you know, they're, they're tough. The, you know, if if and the great thing is, as you say, a team that can hit you on the break when you've got Harry Kane coming into midfield and you've got the the two guys going inside, you know, and and City didn't know when to in, in, to to go in and allow Kane to turn or whatever, and you've got runners, very 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 effective. Uh, one thing I would also like to say is, well, Harry Harry Kane has got to stop jumping underneath people uh, when they go to make a header for the ball. If this was N if this was the NBA, there would be a riot and there would be a fight every game. That's submarining people. You can't do that. It's dangerous, and it, it's it's a foul by Kane. Every time he looks, he puts his back, and when they jump, when they come down, they come down on, on and Kane Kane pr pleads his innocence. 
I'm afraid that is an accident, a proper accident waiting to happen. And as you say, if this were basketball and somebody jumped for the ball and somebody submarine them, they, they take that, that, that's, I'm afraid that's naughty. That really is, and it's got to be stopped. It's got to be, it's gone on too long now. It's happened six or seven occasions and that is dangerous. It yeah. really is. And Harry, Harry knows exactly what he's doing and let's cut that out. Kevin, um, actually, Kevin Ratcliffe mentioned that, didn't he? Um, he had a go at uh, Harry Kane this week. said exactly the same as you, Charlie. He said this could cause a serious injury to a player because, let's face it, the players come down like a ton of bricks, don't they? And especially on these harder grounds, you're going to break bones. You're in trouble. So I agree 100%. It's wrong. And uh, referees should be looking for it. I was playing a game. Sorry, I have to throw this in. I was playing a game of five a side in Dubai with Chris Waddle, of all people. Oh, yeah. And I went, I, it was five a side. This is how bad the standard was. I went up, I went up for a header, and a guy, I, I hadn't heard the phrase. Went submarine. up for a header in five a side. Exactly. That said, that's how bad the standard was. And I, I went over the top of the guy, and I broke both my arms um, as I came down on I Chris Waddle. That's Chris Waddle. And I actually presented the show at the weekend in, in two casts. It, it's, I broke one arm and I did the tendons in my other arm because I fell over the top of the guy. Yeah. Bang. And you put your arm down. And I obviously, anyway, that's another story. Um, but must, but have, it, it, it proves the point. It proves the point. Changed, um, must have changed the rules in five aside, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's supposed to go. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. It, it's Especially pretty, when you put five. Pretty, you're pretty armless. Yay! Listen, um, from one goalkeeper to another, Hugo Lloris. I, I watched uh, with fascination Manchester United in the week against Leipzig, and um, they were all over the place at times. There's no doubt about it. But what was David de Gea doing for the third goal? I, 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 Rick, you, you, I don't know. You saw it when Harry oh. Maguire kind of. I mean, in the old days, they you know say I think. I think it was Glenn Hoddle on commentary said, you've got to take out the ball, the man. And I'm thinking, oof. And I, I wonder if he's been maybe too faithful to David De Gea when you've got someone like Dean Henderson there. But that, to me, that was, that was a, 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 a jarred with me, I have to say, in such a crucial game. I'll tell you now, if Alex Ferguson was the manager, David De Gea would be now up against the, the dressing room wall, the hairdryer on it, full blast. He would not have accepted that. But I'm afraid it was... Strange, Rick, wasn't it? It's such a big game. It, I, I was like, what are you doing, mate? You, come on. You keep that, that, that was David De Gea looking after David De Gea. He obviously didn't want to get hurt. And I think, look, I think we're all huge David De Gea fans in the past, but he, he's not doing it now. He's not the goalkeeper he was. He, for, I think for five seasons, he was Manchester United's player of the season, quite rightly. He's not now... And I think Dean Henderson, well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we'll talk about him in a minute, he has got to make that big decision with the Manchester derby. And Dean Henderson should be playing. Sim simple as that. David De Gea should be taken out. He's, he, he looks shell-shocked. He's not the goalkeeper he was. Dean Henderson deserves this chance. Dean Henderson, you know, refused to go out on loan against the Sheffield United to other clubs because he wanted to fight for the number one place. Fair enough. Now, at the moment, he deserves to come in. If he doesn't, then I'm afraid Solskjaer's bottling it. That decision has got to be made, and it should be made now. Charlie? Couldn't agree more. I mean, but it's, it's too late, isn't it? <laughs> we've been saying, we've been going on. And what, just, can you imagine what Dean Henderson must be, must be thinking now? And, and Romero, and, and Romero is now fourth choice. Why do you need fourth choice? How can Sergio Romero be fourth choice? He should stay at the club and... They've got to get rid of David De Gea. He is, um, and if he comes back and does famously well for in back in Spain, but his heart doesn't seem any. That was the lack of sort of efforts, and and he 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 is a sort of sullen character as well at the moment. He just isn't the same eight goalkeeper. And if you've got Dean Henderson, I'm sorry, Dean Henderson should play, and he should play this weekend in what is a you know a, a massive. Massive game for Manchester United. Um, you know, I, I, again, you know, I, I saw I saw Inter, Inter, Inter Internationale go out of the, the the Champions League midweek, and of course they're now not even in the Europa League. By you know, it, it just seems, but they can concentrate on winning the the Scudetta. Manchester United can't. 
Manchester United have now got, you know, it, it, it's not good enough, you know, to be playing sort of Thursday nights. And they haven't got a Cap Nels chance in the Championship. He's got to prepare. He's got to start. And, and that's, you know, it's a big decision. He's got to make that decision. And Henderson plays. And you've got to say to Henderson, you're going to keep goal for us until the end of the season. It's as simple as that. He deserves a long run. Not one game against Manchester City. He deserves. He deserves to be told, you are my number one. If, if fans had been back, Rico, I mean, I, I make no bones about it. I, lo- I love Oli Solskjaer because I knew him as a kid. I did a lot of stuff with him. I like him as a bloke. And I, I really hope it, 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 you know, it works out for him. But do you think if Manchester United fans had been back and if City really turned him over badly at the weekend, Oli would be in a lot more trouble than perhaps he is, even though he, he's, he's probably in a bit of trouble now? Yeah. I mean, we all like him. Everybody loves Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. I think even opposition fans like him. You know, he, he is a great guy. But I remember um, talking to Freddie Shepherd, who was the Newcastle chairman at the time, and there were problems over Bobby Robson. And uh, I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, if I sack him, it's like shooting Bambi. Uh, you know, and I think it's the same with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Nobody wants to do it. But we keep on saying it. So as we keep on, you know, it's like a broken record. This It's a roller coaster, you know. One day, oh, fantastic. You know, United have gone on this great run. You know, the waveform in the Premier League is is absolutely top class. But they then have these failures, these abject failures. Uh, so it is this roller coaster, and you wonder how long that Oli can hang on for. I think one thing is significant here. I don't think Maurizio Pochettino is going to Manchester United because Real Madrid, as you know, if they'd have gone out, of the Champions League, I think Zinedine Zidane would have been sacked this week. And the man they were talking about as the successor was Pochettino. Now, if Manchester United want Pochettino, you'd have thought they'd have to move for him now, because otherwise they had the chance of, of missing out. But if you talk to people at Old Trafford, which I have to, obviously, my job, they keep on saying, no, we're sticking with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which suggests that Poch, you know all this business about Pochettino sitting on his shoulder ready to come on isn't 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 true. I mean, it's all about timing, isn't it? If Pochettino's still available in a few months' time, they say, well, that could happen then. But certainly at the moment, they they appear to be sticking with him, and that's good in one way. But I just fear that inevitably he will again. We're talking about brave decisions about David de Gea. Maybe the brave decision should arrive in the next next few days, next few weeks. Certainly, this is a huge game for Oli. But, you know, the way it's going, he'll win. You know, and he'll, he'll save himself <laughs> again. And, uh, you know, deep down, we'd all be pleased. Rick, what have you got this... Um, what have you got this... Uh... For the, for the Sunday Mirror, anything you can tell us about that you've been, or people you've been well, chatting? Nothing shattering, but quite interesting. I, I spoke to Jimmy Phillips, father of Nat Phillips, you know, the Liverpool defender, because he's got a good story to tell, Nat Phillips. He, he was almost lost to football. He almost went to America for a four-year scholarship, and then suddenly Liverpool came in. So talking about that, and I've also spoken to um, a lad, Richard Narty. You probably won't know who he is, but he... He was a member of the uh, Chelsea U team alongside, you know, uh, Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham, people like that. He's been at Chelsea since the age of nine. Went on, went to Burton Albion on loan last season, a defender. And then uh, in the middle of the summer, he was released by Chelsea, nowhere to go. So it's the other side of football. But thankfully, after a few months trial at Burnley, Burnley had taken him off. So it's the other side of, other side of football. And very shortly after this, we'll be talking to Anthony Johnson, manager of Chester FC, about life as a non-league manager in these, you know, desperate times. So, interesting, but not earth-shattering. It will be Johnny, interesting. Johnny, any, what's, your, what's, your, what's your football bet for the weekend? What do you fancy? Um, Chelsea to win both teams to score at Goodison um, tomorrow night. I think uh, I'd, like, I'd like to see Ben Godfrey play in the centre of a four-man uh, alongside either Michael Keane or, 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 you know, I don't want Jerry, Jerry Mina, but I'd like Godfrey to play in his um, correct position for Everton for once. Um, I, I don't think that is earth shattering. Um, and again, you can tell that I'm now beginning to sort of restrict, you know, I think Carlo Ancelotti, you know, as we can jump, jump birds off trees and everyone loves him in the same way, you know, that everyone loves Ole Gullis I feel frustrated 
uh, I don't mind getting beat, you know. I, I but I, I just think the performances second half against Fulham, um, Newcastle, Burnley, not good enough, not 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 good enough. And uh, you know, I think this Everton will finish around about tenth, and um, and that's it. But Chelsea to win both teams to score. Have you got a horse for us? Sky Pirates in the Caspian Caviar Gold Cup. It's around about eight to one. Um, I'm afraid, uh, I can't remember what happened last week, but it, it was awful. That also gave you St. Bart's. That runs at Newbury on Wednesday. That was a non-runner. Uh, St. Bart that runs at Newbury on Wednesday. But Wednesday, that's a biggie. Uh, Liverpool versus Spurs. We'll find out how Spurs are. And I've got a feeling they are pretty good. I, do, I have too. Listen, Charlie, thanks a lot. Rico, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend, fellas, and we'll do it all next week. Look okay. forward to it. Cheers, Cheers guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye now.